Okay, welcome to the next lesson. Uh, it's the second lesson about aperture. So just to remind you, aperture is the opening, and in uh, big lenses we can regulate it with uh, either dedicated uh, ring on the lens if there is one, uh, or in the camera, or there is this uh, metal element that also allows us to regulate it. Obviously when this is on the camera, the camera uses this metal element to regulate aperture. Uh, so the consequence of the aperture is uh, actually the change in depth of field. What is depth of field? That means the area which is in focus. So let's say you take a picture of a room or, or a table. Let's say the table is five meters long and you are two meters away from this table. So the, the first edge of the table starts two meter away, meters away from you and, and the, the other edge is seven meters away from you. Now, to take um, the whole table, the picture of the whole table and have everything in focus, that means that your depth of field would need to be around five meters as much as the table is long. However, you can change the aperture to actually set the depth of field to only one meter. So one meter of the, of the things on the table will be in focus and, and the other things will be more and more blurred and the further they are from the um, center of focus, the more blurred they will be. So another way of uh, using, uh, of, of making creative photos. When is it good? Well, in f uh, portrait photography, right? Uh, when you want to have the background blurred, so everything is actually drawing attention to the face. Uh, that's when it's actually quite useful to use very small depth of field. You only want to have face um, in, in focus while everything else behind and in front, I mean in front there shouldn't be really anything, uh, but behind everything should be blurred, right? Uh, so how do we do it? Well, the bigger the aperture, the smaller the depth of field. So the F number, the F number decreases the depth of field decreases, the aperture increases. So the F number goes together with the depth of field while it goes uh, in the opposite direction to the aperture. So the bigger the aperture, the smaller the F number and the smaller the depth of field. Now, if you have a, a compact camera, uh, the depth of field effect is not very pronounced. You can't really see it. Even if you set it to minimum and maximum, the differences are very small. It's all because um, those cameras, they have very small sensors and there is a very small distance between the lens and the sensor itself. And as a result, the depth of field is not so much pronounced. Uh, the bigger the camera, the bigger the sensor, the bigger the distance between the, the lens and the sensor, the more pronounced the depth of field is. So that's why these cameras are really good for photography and compact camera, uh, sorry, for portrait photography and compact cameras cannot give you the same effect. You would need to use uh, Photoshop or some other programs to make the background blurred. However, still, if you have a compact camera, experiment with the depth of field and, and see what difference it, it can make, because there will be some differences that won't be as dramatic as with those uh, big cameras. So go and uh, experiment. Again, don't forget or remember to transfer uh, the photos to your computer, have a look, um, compare them on the monitor to see what difference in focus uh, you get depending on the aperture you use. And I will see you in the next lesson and there will be some more interesting things for you to learn.